The New Testament lesson this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Let us hear the word of God. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while the judge refused. But later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by her continual coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of the Lord. I've tried prayer, and it doesn't work. That's not quite the message you'd like to hear from me this morning, uh, I'm sure. But it's a message that I have heard from some folks. But have you ever had that feeling? Most likely, many of us have had those feelings one time or another. And it probably comes from the frustration of having a countless number of unanswered prayers. A young daughter of a minister asked her father, Daddy, why do you bow your head when you go into the pulpit? I'm talking to God, said the minister, and I asked God to help me preach a good sermon. But Daddy, persisted the child, why doesn't God ever help you? Let's be clear, that's not my daughter. <laughs> we are always in need of prayer. There are a lot of books and sermons written on the subject, and some folks find it easier to talk about prayer than to do it. But I feel that prayer is like eating dessert, a topic about which you should stop talking and get on with it. If I have any excuse about discussing prayer this morning, it is in the hope that what I say might encourage someone to begin again or to put some new energy in what so easily may have become a dead routine. Prayer is essentially talking with God. Not talking about God. Not asking what God might do for me. It is talking with God. Jesus taught the disciples to pray. And in today's scripture lesson from Luke, he encourages them to pray continually. He says that if our prayers are unanswered, we are to pray all the more persistently. The reformer Martin Luther said, as a shoemaker makes a shoe and a tailor makes a coat, so ought a Christian to pray. Prayer is the daily business of a Christian. But how can we pray if our hearts are not in it? How can we continue to pray when it is so obvious at times that our prayers go on unanswered? 
Let us look at our scripture passage today. The parable in question is that of the persistent widow. It represents our Lord's teaching about prayer in what many may regard as its most extreme form. Nowhere in religious literature of the world can we find stronger statements about the effectiveness of prayer than we find in the preaching of Jesus. And this parable of the persistent widow has often been felt to be Jesus' strongest statement of all. Jesus is telling us that we are to do when we prayed and prayed again, and our prayer has apparently not made the slightest bit of difference to anything. What he does is not offer us an alternative method of obtaining our desire, but simply tells us, go on praying all the more harder all the more persistently. To give point to his advice, he asks us to consider a very uncompromising situation. It is one of the most hu uncompromising human analogies of his day, the case of a poor woman without any standing or influence in the community, appealing for redress to an unjust judge who did not fear God nor anyone, fear no man, no woman. Could there be a more hopeless case? She has appealed many times, but the judge will not move a finger to help her. What more can she do? She can do nothing, Jesus says, except to appeal again. And yet again, until at last she tires out the judge and the judge says, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by her continual coming. I will do as she asks, the judge says finally. Could there be a stronger statement than the effectiveness of prayer? But does this mean that the only way that we can get a prayer answered is to press God Almighty until God is tired? God will never be tired. Exactly. God does not tire from your appeals. What then is wrong when I pray and nothing seems to answer, you might ask? Nothing seems to happen. Nothing is wrong, I would say, except giving up. We all know that Christ made some very categorical statements about prayer. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. These are the very sayings that seem to mock us when our prayers are offered yet hit an unresponsive ceiling and drop back unanswered. But Christ said something that we may have missed. The astonishing story read today about the widow and the corrupt judge is prefaced by the words Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. Not lose heart? It seems to me that these words are spoken directly to someone who says in real distress, I have tried prayer and it doesn't work. What this says to me is that when we are crushed by the apparent ineffectiveness of our prayers, we are not to ask ourselves, where did I go wrong? 
and conclude, after all, that our petitions are wasted breath. Our only errors, error will be to stop praying. Keep on praying, said the one who did it, and never lose heart. Think about it. Jesus holds up to his disciples the needs of a woman without standing or influence and tells them a parable that she is granted justice. Our lesson is that though she has been viewed as somewhat unworthy in that day, she has recourse. Jesus deems that she is worthy and therefore what she is about is worthy. And as her justice is granted, so shall our prayers. Our lesson too is that Prayer may not be answered the first time or the second time. That's the tough lesson of this story. It's one that often angers me. But from my experience and from years of praying, it also leads me back to praying that I will receive patience and understanding and to be able to recount my blessings once again. Is persistent prayer all there is? Is prayer only folded hands and bowed heads? Luther said is our daily business. If you will, it is our vocation and what we are about as Christians. We are so apt to interpret the, interpret the meaning of prayer as if Jesus has said that people ought always to pray and not to work and not have fun. As if we are to spend all of our waking hours in prayer. That, I believe, is a mistake that most of us have about thinking about prayer. We think about prayer as an alternative to effort. We often speak as if there are two contrasting ways of facing the evils of our mortal lot. We either fold our hands and pray about them, or we pull up ourselves and do what we can to get on with life. And most of us might agree that the latter is the nobler way. Just get on with life. It is quite plain that our Lord's way of looking at prayer is different from that. What he said was that people ought always to pray and to not lose heart. That is to say that by Jesus' words and actions, he regarded prayer not as an alternative to effort, but something that accompanies effort. Something that is an alternative to despairing in action. A farmer met with severe affliction one winter. His wife and children fell ill, and being very poor, he was in great distress. The leaders of the church decided that they would meet at the farmer's house that night and hold a prayer meeting. While an elder was engaged in pious and fervent supplication, punctuated by equally pious and fervent amens from the gathered people, a knocking was heard at the door. When finally the door was opened, a cheerful, ruddy-looking young farmer stood before them. He was not of their congregation. What do you want, asked one of the elders. I've brought Pop's prayers, he said, smiling. This is no time for 
or place for levity, admonished the elder. What do you mean? Well, you see, explained the boy, Pop heard as how our neighbor had been having a spell of bad luck, what with sickness in the family and one thing or another, and that you folks were over here praying for him tonight. So my dad sent me over here with his prayers. His prayers, repeated the puzzled elder, what do you, I don't understand. Yep, I've got them. Pop's prayers, they're out here in the wagon. And if a couple of you folks will help me, we'll get him in here. In a few minutes, it was discovered that Pop's prayers consisted of a load of potato, potatoes, flowers, cornmeal, apples, warm comforters, and a lot of jellies and delicacies for the sick ones. Prayer unaccompanied by effort. An effort unaccompanied by urgent prayers are two things that Jesus Christ not only preached but never contemplated as a possibility. So it is absurd to pray for good health but never see a doctor. Or to pray for the sick, the weak, and the homeless and helpless and never lift a finger. Or to pray for justice, but to do nothing to right the wrongs. It has been written that true prayer is a way of life. The truest life is literally a way of prayer. If we as Christians expect to follow the true life of Christ, then our life is sustained and recharged by prayer. It is the essential basis of a Christian life that is a combination of offering prayer, receiving prayer, and yes, being the answer to prayer. Yes, you can be an answer to prayer when you help your neighbor who, by offering a ride or a meal. You might be an answer to prayer when you volunteer as a teacher or work at a food center or homeless shelter. When you make a financial commitment to this congregation, you are an answer to someone's prayer that the Church of Jesus Christ continue to proclaim the gospel and the salvation through Jesus Christ in this place. You are an answer to prayer when food and clothing go out of this place to meet the needs of others. Some people have asked, what is the right way to pray? If you have faith grounded in the word of God, you have the beginning of right prayer. There's no special time, place, or position in which to pray. You address God, the Almighty and Creator, and believe a few things when you pray. Believe that Christ loves you even more than you love yourself. The cross is evidence of that. Believe that all power is God's, physical and spiritual. And believe that God is right there with you when you pray. If you believe this and are persistent, I believe you can expect good things. You will be energized and not lose heart. Be energized to be about the work and business of Christ. And a good prayer life can also help us look beyond the fear and threat-based political ideologies of our day in favor of a way of life rooted in deep principles of faith. For me, at least, prayer is no longer religious activity. 
but a continuing dialogue between God and me. So if you pray and do not lose heart, I believe that you will be able to proclaim, I've tried prayer and it works. Let us pray. Help us, O oh God, in our lives to be patient. Bring us to an understanding of how you are our God. And may we grow in faith to see our Lord Jesus Christ with us each and every step of our life. In his name we pray. Amen.